efficient. Efficiency produces more with less effort. You must take definite steps in order to increase the efficiency of your life. Efficiency, the ability to do a job well, plus the desire to do it better. It is more than probable that the average man could, with no injury to his health, increase his efficiency 50%. The efficient man is the man who thinks for himself and is capable of thinking hard and long. God operates through man and man's business is to be a good conductor of the divine current which we call life. Civilization is the efficient way of doing things. Art is a beautiful way of doing things. Economy is the cheapest way of doing things. And in order to do things rightly, we must combine efficiency, industry, art, and economy and see men all with love. All modern efforts of commerce are in the line of making life pleasant, safe, agreeable, and beautiful. Effort. Whether our efforts are or not favored by life, let us be able to say when we come near the great goal, I have done what I could. The best things in life must come by effort from within and not by gifts from outside or from the outside. There's no ceiling on effort. Enjoy or sorrow, health or sickness, prosperity or the reverse, the effort must still continue. One must rise after every fall and gradually acquire courage, faith, and the will to succeed and the capacity to love. In business, as most of it is constituted today, a man becomes valuable only as he recognizes the relation of his work to that of all his associates. It is the cumulative effort that counts. There are efforts and there are results, and it is the strength of the effort that usually determines the size of the result. No man can be good or great or happy except through inward efforts of his own. About the only thing that comes to us without effort is old age. Little effort, little result. Big effort, big result. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. Eloquence. Eloquence is the power to translate a truth into language perfectly intelligible to the person to whom you speak. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Eloquence is the art of saying things in such a way that those to whom we speak may listen to them with pleasure. True eloquence consists in saying all that is necessary and nothing but what is necessary. No man ever did or ever will become truly eloquent without being a constant reader of the Bible and an admirer of the purity and sublimity of its language. He is an elegant man who can treat humble subjects with delicacy, lofty things impressively, and moderate things temperately. Nothing is more eloquent than ready money. A man will be eloquent if you give him good wine. Emotion. 
Probably one of the most important lessons man has to learn is how to guide by his reason the great driving force of his emotions. Man without controlling his emotions can get into all kinds of trouble. He can be led by the wrong leader, playing on his emotions of hate, anger, greed, etc. to plunder, burn, murder, and do all kinds of disruptible things. Or he can be led by the right leader to do all the things that are fine for himself and society. Our emotions are without doubt the driving forces that makes us act as we do and they often make us do things on the impulse of the moment before we have attempted to use our reason to determine whether the results of our act will be good or bad. The changes in the body that are the emotions are mediated partly through the or stimulation of the automatic nervous system, which is why emotionally induced illnesses have been called nerves. Emotion has taught mankind to reason. There is a universal necessity for the legitimate expression of our feelings in every dimension of life, and the unwise repression of any emotion leads all to frequently to frustration and maladjustments. Relax your emotion. Forget the worries and cares of the day. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Employment. Employment gives health, sobriety, and morals. Employment is nature's physician and is essential to human happiness. Never be unemployed and never be triflingly employed. The wise prove and the foolish confess by their conduct that a life of employment is the only life worth leading. We must get away from employment policies based on cold, arithmetical averages and take advantage of the skills and judgment of older people. How hideous a mockery it would be if, as a result of advances in medicine, surgery, hygiene, and higher living standards, older people were kept willing and able to work, but society deprived them of something useful to do. If the government is to guarantee every man a job, then it will have to have the power to create jobs and to go into any business it chooses for that purpose. The government would also have to have the right to tell every man what job he must take and at what wages. Encouragement. We should seize every opportunity to give encouragement. Encouragement is oxygen to the soul. The days are always dark enough. There is not need for us to emphasize the fact by spreading further gloom. I have never seen a man who could do real work except under the stimulus of encouragement and enthusiasm and the approval of the people for whom he is working. Don't discourage the other man's plans unless you have better ones to offer. Correction does much, but encouragement does more. A helping word to one in trouble is often like a switch on a railroad track, but one inch between a wreck and smooth rolling prosperity. A smile of encouragement at the right moment may act like sunlight on a closed up flower. It may be the turning point for a struggling life. 
I believe that any man's life will be filled with constant and unexpected encouragement if he makes up his mind to do his level best each day and as nearly as possible reaching the high watermark of pure and useful living. Encouragement after censor is as the sun after a shower. See? Endure. To endure is the right thing a child ought to learn and that which he will have most need to know. The first and final thing you have to do in this world is to last in it and not be smashed by it. And it is the same way with your work. This is at once a rule for the conduct of life and a rule for the conduct of art to last and to do work that will last. Enjoy what you can and endure what you must. Great souls endure in silence. Endurance is nobler than strength and patience in beauty. Endurance is nobler than strength and patience than beauty. Learn to bear your ills without being overcome by them. Nothing befalls a man except what is in his nature to endure. Endurance is the crowning quality. Endurance is patience concentrated. Enemy. Wise men learn much from their enemies. I destroy my enemy when I make him my friend. Look also for the enemy inside of ourselves as well as on the outside. Counsel out fear. Many have had their greatness made for them by their enemies. Your enemies always finds it harder to answer your silence. A wise man gets more use from his enemies than fools from their friends. Their ill will often levels mountains and difficulties which one would otherwise not face. Just as the flattery of a friend can pervert, so the insult of an enemy can sometimes correct. If you tend to your work and let your enemy alone, someone will come along someday and do him up for you. It is the enemy whom we do not suspect who is the most dangerous. Did a person but know the value of an enemy? He would purchase him with pure gold. Okay then, let's stop this. Let's go here. And let's go, uh...